I Am the Man of Shadows, written by CM Muse. Yes, you've heard that right. I am the boogeyman. I'm the bump in your closet at night. I'm your fear. That singular, hey, you think you hear right next to your ear that makes you jump. I'm the thing that scares your cat or dog so bad that they won't come into the same room, leaving you perplexed and wondering why. I am the call of the void, the urge to jump off a bridge, the almost whisper that says, do it, and then you'll snap out of your trance, glance around. You'll wonder, who said that? And I'll be standing next to you. Now, you won't see me, but I'll be standing there, I promise. And for the most part, I mean you no harm, really. Living among humans for as long as I have, well, you've begun to grow on me. Humans are such fascinating creatures. They wonder for the when. They work for the future. You plan for the existence of one of your own. To birth them into this strange, amazing planet. You raise a smaller version of you and your spouse or perhaps one you're not related to at all. You fall in love, and although you will die, you try to make the best of it. You truly are amazing. Now, you may be curious as to why a man of shadows, a man who is not really a man, would be writing this. And there is truly only one answer. To warn you... You see, like I said, I am the man of shadows. I get bored, and boredom leads to finding ways to pass the time. I'll mess with the papers you swore that you placed on your desk just for some kicks. I'll untune the guitar that you finally got to sound just right. What can I say? I like mischief. But that will also get boring. I tried being nice every once in a while, learning how to influence your thoughts, how to give you that winning lottery number, helping you to find your lost pet. But once again, I got rather bored. So, more often than not, I began to follow some of your kind around for a while, usually just for one or two weeks. No offense to you humans, but your stupid little routines, they get so tiring for me. And then, oh, oh, then, that's when I encountered him. Jonathan Omar, an accountant at a small bank, but he still made decent money. Me and the woman that I had been shadowing, you must excuse me, the jokes are just all too much fun. Anyway, we passed him by in the subway, where Jonathan had not been looking where he was going, and he ran right into the young woman, knocking the books from her hands. Cliché much, I narrated. They ignored me, of course, not hearing me over the hustle and bustle of the trains and people. Quickly, Jonathan and the woman began to pick up her books. I'm sorry, he apologized, his teeth flashing a perfect smile. Are you all right? Geez, it's clumsy of me, huh? No, no, it's fine. I really wasn't focusing on where I was going. It was clear that she was infatuated with this man right from the start. Brown eyes smiling, tall, and a cheery smile. Any girl or guy's Prince Charming. I'm Alyssa. The young lady adjusted her glasses and extended her hand. Jonathan, right? How did you know? He said. Your name tag, she giggled. Ah, this is the sappiest, guys. Come on, I commented. Yet still, I felt proud of Alyssa. The biggest thing that I had learned was that she was a rather shy one. All big jackets and a small voice. She was being brave, and I had to applaud her. 
Eventually, after the constant flirting and smiles, Jonathan asked her for her number, and they left one another. Alyssa seemed to be smiling a bit more than when she first entered the subway. I don't know why I didn't leave and follow another person. I think I just wanted to see where they would go. How Alyssa, the new college student, would either break his heart or vice versa. When he finally asked her out, that was when I became completely invested in their story. It was like a romantic comedy and I was the audience. I mean, who gets this chance? I knew of human love, but I had never seen it come together firsthand. So, naturally, I followed Alyssa to Jonathan's home for their first date. I sat in the car all the way there, listening to Alyssa's questionable choice of music. But I do have to say that I did bop my head a few times to Beyonce. And may I say, it was the best first date that I've ever seen someone pull off. Or at least the first half. Jonathan was a complete gentleman. Alyssa, a polite young lady. It was small smiles, kind looks, and no basic, so what do you do for work? Because, I mean, come on. Why is that your interest? But still, like I said, this whole time I was proud of Alyssa. She was breaking her comfort zone for love. It was the purest form of anything I've seen. But then came the end. I began to sense it when Jonathan's smile stopped reaching his eyes. Altogether, he seemed to become plastic. His hair seemed all too perfect all of the sudden. His basic suit seemed to smell sickeningly sweet. Well, I'll be going, Alyssa said as she smiled gently, brushing some non-existent dirt from her light blue shirt. Why, come on and stay a bit longer. At least try some more of my cooking. Jonathan, you know, midterms are coming up soon and I can't fail, she said. Oh, and just like that, the man who seemed kind and all too perfect began to get a bit touchy, placing his hands on Alyssa's hips and pulling her close. Hey, buddy, don't you know what no means, I said, beginning to feel protective of the girl who couldn't hear me. Even though Alyssa protested, he still held strong. The atmosphere dropped like a stone from a ledge. John, you're, you're hurting me. Alyssa grabbed his hands, trying to pull his hands off her. He stopped smiling. I didn't think that the romantic comedy would stop and become a horror show. After the struggle and the fighting and my relentless screams that no one could really hear, just barely a no in the background of the sound of a snapping neck, Jonathan's suit lost the sickeningly sweet smell and her blood was all you could smell. I could do nothing but mourn as I watched blood flow freely from her mouth and finally the light fade from her eyes from the eyes of a young lady with a bright future. Someone who was meant to be loved and cherished and peacefully pass one day when she was very, very old. And she had lived her last moments in fear, thrashing and fighting, being scared, terrified, with no one to comfort her in her time of greatest need. I don't know what broke inside me or what helped break the wall between me and the human world, but Jonathan all of the sudden was looking at me, right at me, and I looked right back at him. And when he began to scream, help, monster, I knew what I needed to do. You see, this is my warning. I may be your silent fear, your urge to jump, your bad luck, but maybe your good luck as well. But I'm also your karma, so... 
Lewis Wellings, an axe murderer that terrified Alaska, was found sobbing on the ground and was later put in an Alaskan mental hospital for PTSD and treated for the loss of his arms and legs. Amber Arbuckle, a psycho who had a knack for killing, was found hanging in her living room by the FBI raiders who she called, exposing her location. The note she left simply said, sh 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 Shadow, shadow, shadows, shadow, over and over and over, and then finally, I'm sorry. And Jonathan Omar's remains were found seven years later. The only way they were able to identify the sludge of his remains was with the smallest of skull fragments. And while I know that none of these deaths will bring back the kind young lady with a smile in her heart and kindness in her eyes, it will sure make me feel a lot better. You see, even when you think you're unstoppable, that the police can't track you, that you can cover your tracks so well that you might be a shadow yourself, I promise you're not unstoppable. Because, quite literally, I am your worst nightmare. So, like I said, I don't want to hurt you humans. For the most part. But I will. So you better watch yourself. Whether it's good or bad, karma always comes around. And you will get what you deserve.